Okay, this is going to be a follow-up video on the previous video which was released for this induction heater. I've had many people email me and ask in the comment section what is the current rating of this particular induction heater. People want to know what the current is that's being consumed by the circuit and they also want to know what the current does when I insert an object to be heated. And in this video we're also going to take a look at a different working coil. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is desolder one of the leads going from the filter capacitor to the induction heating circuit and I'll connect my digital multimeter in series with the wire and the capacitor to measure how much current is flowing through the circuit. And then after we observe what the current flow is, I will then insert the screwdriver into the working coil and then we can take a look at the current at that point also. Okay, I have the digital multimeter connected in series with the power supply into the induction heating circuit. I will now power up the circuit and you can observe the current flow right here on the meter. And then I will insert this Phillips screwdriver into the working coil and we'll see what kind of an effect it has on the current. Here we go. All right, around 2.75, let's put that in. And look at that current spike up, look at that. 6.7 amps, 7 amps. So it really does shoot up. I'll take it back out. Goes right back down and this is getting hot already. That's a lot of current going through here close to 8 amps. Alright, so as you just observed, the currents are a little under 3 amps, 2.75. As soon as a metallic object is placed inside the working coil, it goes almost triple that amount of current. So now that that test has been complete, I'm now going to solder back the lead on the capacitor over there. Alright, now that we went over the current flow into the circuit, established what the readings are for the current, the next thing I wanted to discuss is the capacitor, which is in parallel with the working coil. A lot of people uh, emailed me or posted comments regarding how hot it gets. Now this particular one here can get fairly hot, but not too hot that I can't touch it. Now ideally you would like to find a capacitor that's rated for use with high frequency. Now you can buy high frequency capacitors online. If you're really serious about making a unit like this and you want to have it really good and really reliable, definitely look up a high frequency capacitor. And if you don't have a high frequency capacitor, you can try and spread out the current by using two or three capacitors in parallel. So instead of using just a 0.47 microfarad, you might want to use maybe 0.15 microfarads each. Three of them in parallel will be around 0.45. So you can spread the current out among all three of them. By doing that, it can handle the load better, and it, this one will not get so hot because you have two others to help dissipate the heat. Now the next thing I want to do is remove this working coil and experiment with a different type of a working coil. Now after this working coil is desoldered, what I'm going to do is put in place of it this spiral wound coil that I put together. Now this one has approximately eight and a half turns, straight in about eight and a half. Now you can't put the center tap in the middle like this one here because in this case here both of these turns are exactly the same on each side of the center tap. So the inductance is almost identical on both sides of the windings from the center tap. Now because of the way that this spiral coil is wound, you don't want to go four and a half or four and a quarter turns and put a tap. And the reason for that is because you're going to have an inductance mismatch. You'll have the inductance lower here and greater on the outside spirals. 
to compensate for the mismatch of inductance, what I did is I went in about two and three quarter to three turns, and that is where I placed the center tap. So from this point, you have all these windings on the outside going to one MOSFET. And then from that point all the way in to here, you'll have the other MOSFET connected. By doing that, the inductance of the central portion rings from here all the way in should be very close to the inductance value of the first three rings. So you should have a balance. Now I didn't have enough copper wire laying around to make the spiral fully, so I, I brazed or hard soldered using very high temperatures the copper together right here, and I brazed the tap onto the coil. So the heat should not affect any of these connections. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to desolder this working coil and we're going to test out this coil to see how well it works. Okay, I desoldered the original working coil and we now have temporarily soldered in the new spiral wound working coil. Now this coil we're going to be testing does not have the level of concentration of heat like the open core working coil like you see here. The heat is more spread out so you won't get the screwdriver to turn red hot but we should be able to get it fairly hot that when I put it into the water it should sizzle. So let's give it a try. Alright I'm now going to power up and we're going to heat up the screwdriver and douse it in the water. Let's hold it right above the coil just like a pot would be over the top of the coil and let's see if this heats up nicely. In a minute, I will douse it in the water. We'll see if it sizzles. It should definitely be getting hot. Let's give it a shot right around now. Yep, there we go. So it definitely works. And like I said, you won't get anything glowing hot out of that. Unlike this one here where everything glows red inside of it. But I can see why they would use something like this for cooking. Let me feel the coil. Uh, the middle's hotter than the outside edge. It's hot here too, but hotter in the middle. And the reason why it's probably a little hotter in the middle than it is here is because the tapping point needs to be moved to a different spot, that's all. I'd have to make the larger spiral a little smaller and I'd let a little bit more go into the central spirals and then it should probably adjust it that they're just about the same. The, the MOSFETs, that's very, very warm. And this one's just a little hotter because that goes to the center. It's an interesting type of a heater, the spiral. All right, this is a close-up. What I'm going to do is dip the screwdriver in water. You will see the sheen of the water on the screwdriver. I'll place it about a quarter of an inch above the coil plug it in and you will see the water evaporate fairly quickly. Alright, screwdrivers in the water dipped in, plug in the coil, and let's hold it over the top. Disappearing. And as you can see, she is definitely heating. Now I also came up with an idea for another type of a spiral, which I have not yet tested, but you can feel free to test it. And it looks like this drawing right here. Hopefully I answered a bunch of questions for you regarding how much current 
and what to do with the capacitor if it gets too hot and you wanted to know also if a spiral coil works well so now you know all the results thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed this video please rate it a thumbs up subscribe and post links to this video on other websites and blogs